Hello, vinyl community. So, some more records. Uh, lately I've been listening to a lot of uh, spheric stuff. This one is quite famous. Cluster and Eno. Now, this album came out in 1977 and uh, is a seminal collaboration between the German uh, experimental band Cluster and, of course, Brian Eno. This is a wonderful album. Now I don't regard this as an as a as one of these typical stepping stone albums towards the development of ambient music because this is already a fantastic ambient album. The form and the ideas of ambient are quite developed here. Well this came out on sky and uh Of course, it was uh, recorded uh, by Connie Blanc, who is this uh, um, producing key figure of the German crowd rock movement. Um, there are some more people on this album that contributed uh, to the recording. Holger Zukai from, from Cannes, of course, and uh, Asmus Tietjen uh, is on one of the tracks. So this is a wonderful album, and certainly one of my favorite. The other album I'd like to show you is from 1984, and this is A Quiet by Sheila Chandra. This was her second album. Um, Sheila Chandra, what she does here is uh, she uses a lot of sargam, which is, uh, this is a Hindi word for uh, for a particular way of singing, where you, where to every every note you sing, there is a particular vowel assigned to it. So um, you sing these vowels. This is uh, something uh, which you find a lot in India. For example, in uh, in tabla schools where where young people learn playing tablas, and you have there this kind of a uh, these these tala tala rhythms and uh, while they are learning this kind of drumming um, they sing it they sing uh, with the teacher which is actually a good method because you can get into rhythms easier once you learn to sing them with your voice so this sound it, it sounds something like a, you have to imagine it's like a, this is a bad rendition, but uh, you get the idea. Now, uh, uh, she made a whole album with uh, in the Sargam style, which is truly uh, an interesting idea. It's 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 a it's a it's an it's not an instrumental album, but it's not an album with songs because there are no lyrics. This is um, sort of a singing of all kind of vowels. It's a very unique album, I have to say. Um, show you this wonderful inner sleeve with Sheila Chandra. Um, <laughs> now, interestingly, this is a Scandinavian pressing. I think it's from Sweden. And uh, so there's a nice interview with her. But I don't speak any Scandinavian language, so I can only guess. Very interesting. It's not a. It's not a. It's not an album that is completely immersed into Indian music. In parts it's very modern. Uh, it has a great bass guitar playing and uh, there are elements to it which are rather rooted in um, sort of Western ambient or experimental music. If you don't know this album, look it up. It's worth your while. Now this one is something special. <laughs> Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars by Black Lung. Now Black Lung is a project from Australia. It's actually the guy who's doing Snog, which is a, another band. But Black Lung is um, um, a, a uh, sort of a dark ambient uh, electro-industrial project. Of course this is a 
wonderful picture disc. I'm going to take it out so we can see it better. So this is very enjoyable on a turntable. It's rotating. And uh, the other side, even better. Now this this music was originally released, I think, in 1994, but this is a 1998 re-release by the Anzen label in uh, Germany. And the sound is, um, yeah, it's dark ambient. I would say it's a dark ambient with a sort of a experimental industrial elements to it. And finally. I have just uh, listened to three albums by Vangelis, or as some say, Vangelis. Um, this is the Albedo 0.39 album, which is like from 1976, yes. Um, coming in a nice gatefold sleeve. If you can open it. Vangelis. <laughs> An interesting flip side. Now, uh, I wasn't always a big Vangelis fan. Back in the day, I sometimes felt that his stuff is a little too cheesy for my taste. Um, but then again, there was this enigmatic Blade Runner soundtrack, which, uh, of course, took almost 20 years to be released. But. Um, so uh, I had a rather mixed feelings about Vangelis. On the one hand, I kind of uh, respected the his role as a pioneer in the 70s. On the other hand, I found some of his later works a bit obnoxious. But not until not that long ago, I kind of started to listen into his early materials material a little more. And uh, here is the, the Victor label. <laughs> yeah, I, I like this album quite a lot. I mean, the last track is really amazing. I have it on CD as well. But I mean... The thing with ambient music and this kind of a spheric music is uh, that uh, actually sometimes uh, it's really better to have it on CD, isn't it? I mean, it's just the one genre that uh, embraced the CD for a reason, and a lot of great ambient albums uh, I have only on CD, and they never they were never released on on on, on vinyl, but. There is also this feeling of nostalgia by holding it in your hand and uh, being so big. Now China is another album by Vangelis that came out like two years later. Uh, back in the day I had a bit of an issue with this album, especially because I uh, felt like, I mean there's a track called rather dominant track called Himalaya. Uh, but I mean, of course, this is a sort of a concept album dealing with the sort of the cultural framework of China. And uh, um, I always felt that making a track called Himalaya kind of really neglects the fact that Wherever you find China, in the Himalayas, you probably most obviously uh, standing inside of Tibet. <laughs> and that is a hot topic, of course. But uh, I've grown older and learned to, to be more accepting, at least in terms of art. And uh, yeah, um, that's the inner sleeve. Kind of in red, which is not really... Kind of fitting together with this, but why not? Um, yeah, this one came out on Polydor. Now the music is uh, quite good. I uh, 
I'm not a, a too crazy fan of Vangelis, but um, there are a lot of tracks here that are really interesting and uh, also I decided not to say the word real and really so often in my videos, so um, I'm trying. And this here is uh, Opera Sauvage, which came out the same year as uh, China. And this is Vangelis' uh, soundtrack to a documentary by French filmmaker Frédéric Rossif. Again, this is a mixed bag for me. There are some tracks here that I like a lot. Now, the opening track is really far too cheesy for me. I mean, enough is enough. So that's the one where I would tend to skip it. Again, it comes in this... Nice gatefold sleeve. So on the right side you have a sort of a set photograph from the filmmaking of this documentary. On the other side, of course, Vangelis himself. So um, I'll keep it short so the upload doesn't take forever again. And um, see you next time. Bye-bye.